TMG fam, it's your boy L, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Um, real quick before we get into the video, man, I want to spend a special shout out. I want to send a special shout out. Listen, I got my got my red cup here, bro. It's Father's Day weekend, and I'm getting started early. All right. So my words may slur a little bit, but it's okay. Deal with it. All right. So listen. Um, before we get started, I do want to give a special shout out to. Uh, to those who, who have dangerous jobs, man. Um, those who fight for our country, um, those in law enforcement, um, firefighters, and um, whomever that may have a dangerous job to where you know there's a possibility you may not come home. And uh, what's got me into that, man, we had an incident, tragic incident happen here the other night, man. Involving a police officer, routine stop, pulls the car over, something happens, man. The, car, the cop end, ends up getting drugged, ultimately loses his life man he was very very young fresh out of the academy and had just been married only two years man i think maybe has a kid or something like that but it was extremely sad extremely sad so you know what i mean i just want to send that out send that uh those warm praises out condolences to his family and uh those who who have the tough jobs man where you know there's a possibility you may not come home man i just want to big those people up all right, so yeah, I know I already done killed the mood, but I figure what be what better video to do it on than one of these type of videos, which is gonna probably have us on an emotional roller coaster anyway. Um, shout outs to that chapter, man. If you guys aren't subscribed to them, please go do so. Go show them some love. You already know they got a ton of great content. All right, so this horrifying case of Talia Palmer, I think I might have gotten it. I don't know. We'll see when this the video starts. We're going to get into this case tonight. So if you're new to the channel, man, hit the subscribe button. Let's get to it. Hey, you, and welcome. My name is Mike. And in this whole video, we're going, we're going down under. Down under what? To Australia. So look forward to that. You know, grab a Foster's, stick on the Barbie, dodge a snake, and punch a roo. To Queensland, we're off to to a place called Logan City, south of Brisbane. There, the Torburns were foster parents. And in 2015, along came Tiali Palmer. And we will take it from there, so... Let's give it a go! It was a hot, sunny summer's day in the middle of January 2015, which is still baffling to me, that a 12-year-old Tiali Palmer, Tia, arrived at a house in Chambers Flat, a fairly rural area about 40 minutes from downtown Brisbane. She gave a good day to her new family, a foster family, the Torburns. The Torburns were made up of Daddy Rick, Mama Julian, and two sons, 18-year-old Trent and 19-year-old Josh. At 12 years old, Tia had already been in the foster system for about five years at this point. Her mother, Cindy, uh, gave her up to, to the system uh, when she was seven years old. Cindy, at the time she was in an abusive relationship, there was violence at home. And she thought, well, it was the right thing to do. She couldn't, she couldn't take care of her. It wasn't safe for Tia anymore with her. She brought her to the Department of Child Protection, and while Tia entered the system, Cindy would spiral into drugs, police custody, and eventually homelessness. And so when Tia eventually ended up with the Torburns, it's all good. She'd been, you know, with in and out of, I guess, a few families. None of them worked out, obviously. But hopefully, you know, the Torburns would be the one. They were well respected in the community, and it seemed like a good home for Tia to grow in. They had horses, even. The only misgiving Cindy had, who Tia was still close with, 
was that she'd be living with two teenage boys. She didn't like that at all. Rick and Julene had been married for over 25 years. Rick had been a truck driver, but after injuring his back, he, he couldn't hack it anymore, and so started a fast food business out of a van called Nothing Healthy Here. Wait, is that the food or him? He did this with Trent and Josh. It was apparently an American-style fast food joint, which is... Judging by that picture, hot dogs, end of list. Julene, in the meantime, ran a daycare out of the house. And so, as the months passed, the four-piece family became a five-piece. Alright, I'm already suspicious. It's like he keeps emphasizing the son, so I'm already suspicious of them doing something to her. Uh, you know what I mean? I have no clue where the story is going, but I'm already suspicious of the two boys. At first, I was thinking, before we got to them, I was thinking, okay, maybe the dude who was abusing the mom, which forced her to turn the girl in, to Child Protective Services, maybe he came back and was looking for the daughter and did something to her. But now I'm focusing my attention and listening to everything he says about the sons. So as the months passed, the four-piece family became a five-piece. It was, they seemed to be doing great. Tia attended Marisden State High School, not terribly far from her new home, maybe 20 minutes, and seemed to be settling in pretty well there. And now, on the 30th of October 2015, was a Friday. It started out, you know, like any other normal day. Always does. Tia had been living with the Torburns for about nine months uh, at this stage. And so, spooky season, right? Uh, did I celebrate Halloween in Australia? The day before Halloween, something spooky happened. That morning, Rick drove Tia to school, dropped her off at ten past eight, and off he went. However, Tia was not seen at any classes at the high school. She was a complete no-show at school. Huh? After dropping Tia off, Rick went to pick up a few bits and bobs for his cars. He loved automobiles. And then he arrived home. A couple of hours later, he got a call from the school saying, you know, Tia was never Never know. That is when she was reported missing. Now, Tia had run away from home, from their home, a couple of times before. As you can imagine, you know, being a foster child, not the easiest. But every time she did do a legger, she was nearly always found, you know, within a, within a few hours. She'd, she'd show up eventually. Not this time. The police began looking for her. Rick posting on Facebook asking if anyone had seen her at all. Nothing. This wouldn't be publicly announced for a few days, something which would be criticized later. The police never informed the public of a missing child. Huh? That would be a big deal later, you know. Uh, seems like nobody cared about her. But this like, no Amber uh, What is it? Amber Alert or nothing like that? Somebody's missing something? To stage it wouldn't matter. On the 5th of November, less than a week after she had been reported missing, a discovery was made. Not the kind of one you would want. On the banks of the Pampama River, south of Brisbane, lay the body of a young girl. It was fishermen who stumbled across her, searching for snapper, flathead, but instead they found Tia. She had just been dumped there in the mud, reeds, and shallow water. Tia was naked apart from underwear, which had been uh, pulled down, and she was like in a heavy state of decomposition. So when the body was actually discovered, IDing who this was, was was quite difficult under the hot, you know, November sun. And it definitely wasn't possible to determine a cause of death, but it was determined to be Tia. And so now you got a missing persons investigation as a murder investigation. Queensland police have identified a body found on the Gold Coast as 12-year-old Tiali Palmer. She hadn't been seen since last Friday as she made her way to school in Logan. Her remains were discovered on the banks of the Pimpama River on Thursday evening. It's very important that we speak with anybody who was there over the last seven days. 
and, and that's even if they think that they can't help us, even if they saw nothing, that's really important to us that they come forward and tell us that they saw nothing. So who do you, you know, look at first? Well, you start with the obvious ones, the Torburns. Right. Do you have anything to do with the death of Tim Lee Palmer? Absolutely not. All right. How was her demeanor that morning? She was on, on key. She was happy. You know, it's really sprightly. You know, um, yeah, just, and I, I was sort of pleased that she was happy that day. I heard her all the We're going to have a good day. Wait, is there anything you can tell me about this man? Nothing at all. I just, um, yeah, just, I dropped her off. They are questioned extensively, but the investigation moved on. The school where Tia was last. It was canvassed, students questioned. When, when was she last seen? Police investigating the suspected murder of Queensland schoolgirl Tiali Palmer will this morning take their search for information to the place she was last seen. They admit they still don't have a motive or no clear cause of death. In fact, they say they sadly may never know. So she was dropped off at the school and then she just disappeared. She must have left the school quite early because, you know, teachers, none of the teachers saw her, she never attended any uh, classes. But a few students said, yeah, I've seen her, she was wandering at the hall. So how does that, how does that even happen? How does, how does that make any type of, of, as, as the parent dropping the kids off, I'm just, uh, you know what I mean? I'm, 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 I'm thinking about dropping your kids off. Normally you drop them off either at the front of the school and you watch them walk in or, you know what I'm saying? For the, uh, most of the times. I know every school is not the same and they may not all have the same layout. Cool. You know what I mean? But as a parent, don't you try to watch your kid go into the school? You know, try not to be so caught up in yourself or what you got to do for the day or what you got going on to not be present in the moment of watching your child walk into school. So I get why they, why they uh, went at the father. Yeah, he was the last person to be known with her. Took her to school. Well, where's the cameras? Like, I have so many questions right now. I was having a grand old time. So finding out when she left was quite difficult. Also, she had a backpack and a uniform. Where were they? Any sex offenders in the area, they were brought in, questioned over 300 of them. But uh, that wasn't a huge lead either. It seemed to be going nowhere fast. The Torburns, they must have seen something though. You know, she lived with them. They might have the key. They might just not know it. Tiali was buried on the 14th of November. Her funeral attended by over 600 people from the community and beyond. Almost five months after the death of Tia Lee Palmer, her killer has yet to be identified, and mother Cindy fears that a $250,000 incentive may not be enough. The person or people who know something about this are too loyal to whoever they're helping. So I'm guessing that money's not really going to be an issue. The people who did it should know that uh, we're not giving in, that we have uh, a team of detectives that are committed to, uh, to finding out what happened, and so they should never feel at ease. As 2015 became 2016, summer turned to autumn, no, no new leads emerged in the investigation at all. The Torburns were ruled out, sex offenders too. There were no other uh, likely suspects you know, in the area, and due to the level of decomposition, Tia left behind very little clues as to what what actually happened to her. Police thought she skipped school that day. Then, perhaps as she was out and about, a passing motorist kidnapped her. That was one theory, you know, one of many. Again, I would like to just remind um, people that there is a reward available in relation to this uh, investigation is a $250,000 reward uh, which is available 
to uh, anybody who provides information leading to the apprehension of the offenders. But more importantly, as I've uh, said before, there is also an indemnity from prosecution available for any person who may have, may have been a, a part of the offence but didn't actually commit the murder themselves. Wow. It wasn't until May 2016, six months after Tia was discovered, that um, the first real lead came up. Crime Stoppers received an anonymous tip. Someone called in and had information. They had a story to tell, and it was about Tia. And it flipped everything on its head. They told of how Tia had complained about having stomach cramps in the last couple of weeks of October, and how on the 29th of October, the Torburns had a family meeting. The next day, Tia disappeared. This essentially led the police to do a spit take and start re-examining things they had kind of put to bed already. Maybe the Torburns were just really good at hiding stuff. Well, not in this case, actually, because around the same time, Rick, Daddy Rick, was also accused of sexual abuse of children out of Julene's daycare, so... This was, of course, completely surprising to everybody. It seems like the Torburns had circled the wagons after Tia disappeared to maintain their, um, you know, respectable family image. And around that time, the police placed secret recording devices in the Torburn home. And it revealed how Rick and Julene coached the boys, and also how cracks began to form. Eventually... All of them are involved? Are you serious? No. 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 All of them are involved. Wow. All of them are involved. <laughs> That's blowing my mind right now. Yo. <sighs> Fully armed with the evidence they had, and also how cracks began to form. Eventually, armed with the evidence they had, which also proved they'd committed perjury, as they could prove they were lying and had lied, they brought in Julene and Josh. What happened? Was that anonymous tipster who, who called Crime Stoppers? They'd gotten Facebook messages from wannabe boy band member Trent Torburn. And the messages went a little something like this. Basically. Hey, are you free to talk? I really need to talk right now. Anything for you. What's up? I'm in trouble and don't know what to do. I don't know what's going to be hard for you to believe, but I'm telling the truth. Please, please help me. Trent had been having sex with Tia. Tia was 12. He was 19. So he raped her. He feared Tia became pregnant and went to his parents. They had a family meeting, and the next day, Tia disappeared. Fred came out to me and he started to cry, and he said, um, Mum, I've done something terrible. And he said, um, I've had um, a sexual encounter Tia or something to those words. Okay, I was going to say, but they yeah, were no, not the words, but yeah, I don't really remember exactly what it was then, but yeah, it indicated yeah. that he had a sexual encounter with Tia. Yeah, the message was clear. It was, yeah. And I said, oh my God, mate. I was absolutely stunned, shocked. I said, oh mate, you know, how could you let something like that happen? I said, we will deal with it. Rick was very concerned because he knows the implications for a boy of his age with a girl of her age. He was adamant about him doing jail time, that he would go to jail for something like this. So we were concerned she could be pregnant or something. That evening, Thursday the 29th of October, they had a, uh, you know, family discussion. And after Rick essentially told everybody, Julene and the two boys, Get out of the house, especially two boys. Go somewhere, you know, you'll be seen by others. So he was left in the house with Tia. See, behind uh, closed doors, Rick was, well, what I like to call a real piece of shit. Extremely controlling, and the rest of the family was afraid of him, including young Tia. She grew to fear him quickly. 
She never wanted to be left alone with him, and she started running away from the Torburn home. That's why she was running away. It wasn't just because she just out of ran away. She was running away because she wasn't comfortable living where she was, bro. She wasn't. And that's why, man, when you think about these kids and these children in these foster homes, bro, and what they have to deal with, my heart goes out to them, man. Out to them. Being in and out of foster home, out of foster home, being in there with people who don't care nothing about you, they just see you as an opportunity for them to get a check. So they treat you like less than human feces. They they just do so many things to you, man. Bro, this is, I told you, pissing me off. And she was alone with Rick that evening. When they returned, the rest of the family, uh, he told them she was gone. She was in fact in his shed and would be dumped along the river the next day. The last time that you saw, you saw Tia Power in life, when was it? In the bedroom. Sitting yeah. on my bed. Mm -hmm. okay. I said goodnight to her there. Yep. And, um, yeah. And expressed to her that maybe she needed to stay there and and put herself to sleep when she was ready, sort of thing. Yeah. And where was Rick? I think he was outside the kitchen door, like waiting for me to come back outside. Okay. Was there anyone else in the house? Nobody else in the house, no. And then you left? Mm -hmm. so the exact words. It's all taken care of or something. Okay. What do you mean by that? So don't worry. Don't ask any questions. I've taken care of it. Um, and I went to go to her room and he said, don't go in there. You know, you said that mm. he was a bit worried about what might happen to Trent. Yeah. So we're going from that to killing her while you're out. Yeah. No, I would never have left the house if I thought that. I had no indication, no feeling that he would do something like that. But you knew this. You knew something, the possibility. And then when her body was found, you still said nothing. Six months went by. Y'all even had a funeral holding her body, taking it in, and still said nothing. You still didn't put two and two together? Don't sit in front of me with that, man. <sighs> bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm not in that line of work right there, bro. I can't be. I can't be. Because they'd have had to remove me from the room, man. That was a little girl, bro. Innocent little girl. Innocence taken from her and ultimately mur murdered and found with her clothes around or ankles or wherever they found her clothes at, bro. Just treat it like a piece of trash. And you want to sit here and tell me you would have never left if you would have thought that? I, I care less what you would have never thought or what you did at this point. Imagine her standing there screaming for help, saying, no, don't do this to me. And y'all left the house and let him do it. So as far as I'm concerned. That's it. Zero on the believability scale. The sightings of Tia at school, the sightings here, which, which made the police believe that she actually had been dropped off at school. False sightings. They wore school uniform. Every day in school is like Groundhog Day. You know, I'm sure they thought they saw her. Rick never dropped her off that morning. That was all a story he told the police. I didn't know about it until, um, until she had been murdered. Um, and I was informed later that day of everything that had happened. And she had had sex with my brother at a point I don't know when. Dad called us into the lounge room to, um, yeah, to discuss. That, um, that there was a few things happening. Trent had, um, it was at that point that I was then informed about what Trent had done with Tia. And Dad called us in, sat us down, um, proceeded to explain that Trent had had sex with Tia. And you now I, I really didn't want to look at either of them. Mm -hmm. And Dad proceeded to say that, um, we all had to protect Trent. We all had to um, 
keep a story amongst the public, amongst everyone, um, and the public and everyone else that the the next day Tia was going to go missing from school. Um, but Tia, he then informed me that Tia was his exact words by Tia is no longer with us. Um, and also he said. Um, I hope you understand what that means. During that discussion at home, did he discuss with you the intricacies of how she was killed? No. I still don't know what happened there. I just know that he did. Mm -hmm. That he did do it. Um, and I, he said to us that it's best we don't know how it happened because the less we know, the less we can tell. Rick murdered. Now don't get me wrong. Uh, the parents, all of them is, is, is trash in my opinion. All of them are trash in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? And I feel, I, I feel more pissed at Rick, but I'm pissed at them because her body sat there for God knows how long out there, just out there by that river, man. And if that fisherman wouldn't have showed up, it would have continued to just sit out there. You know what I'm saying? So, that's what pisses me off too. So y'all just as as guilty as him of doing that, cause y'all just let the body just just sit there. Tia, because his son slept with her, raped her, and feared she may be pregnant. Why? Seems to be to protect the family image, reputation. I mean, this fucker abused, sexually abused other kids. So I, I wanted I wanted to come and tell the police that I, I that I'd been told what had happened but I knew that if I did that I wouldn't make it ten steps out of the door that he would do the same to me I just wish it didn't turn out this way I wish none of this ever happened yes <laughs> Julian and Josh became witnesses for the state after they cracked and so, it was after Rick, they went. It was determined that he genuinely did drive to the school that morning, even though Tia was already dead. I guess he wanted to make sure his car was spotted. And it was! On CCTV, driving by the school. In mid-September, Rick's car was seized. The police guessed it had been used for something. Can you tell us why your car was seized? Can you tell us why your car was seized by police? Stay outside the gate, you're on private property. Please. Okay. Don't have to say, you'll have to speak to the Crime and Corruption Commission. And the shitstorm hit the Torburns not long after. It was the 20th of September 2016 that the entire family were taken into custody. Julene and Josh, who they did cooperate, both were charged with perjury and attempting to pervert the course of justice. Trent was charged with two counts of perjury, attempting to pervert the course of justice, and also incest. Rick, he was charged with murder and interfering with a corpse. And then, get a load of this, shortly after Rick was arrested, he collapsed off. Overnight, he was taken by ambulance here to the Princess Alexandra Hospital. We do understand he's been involved in some kind of self-harm incident, and it's believed he may actually face a bedside hearing here in hospital rather than face Beanley Courthouse today. It seemed that at the time of his arrest, he knew the Rosers were coming and they were not going to take him alive. They did, though. He had taken a load of pills, attempting to off himself. If only he had the same level of success with that as he did with the rest. Instead, he was placed in a- Agreed. Agreed. No, I don't feel bad about saying it. Should have took a couple more, but not enough. A medically induced coma. He then woke up a few days later and it was like, yep, all right, so uh, where were we? Oh, you killed a child? Yeah. It would come out during the trial that Tia had told her foster mother about the abuse, and she did nothing. The week before her death, she also tried to move to a friend's house, and the Department of Child Safety were also notified. They did fuck all. 
It was only when, of course, that Trent said he thought she may be pregnant that something happened. The worst thing. In the end, Josh was sentenced to three months, Juline, 18 months, Trent was sentenced to four years, and Rick, the big dirty bastard, he got life without the possibility of parole for 20 years. Your conduct throughout all of the offending is made more shocking for the deliberateness of your actions and your willingness to coerce every member of your family to maintain false accounts in an effort to cover up your despicable behaviour. And now in 2021, all except Rick, they're all out and about. So that's fun. What wasn't fun though was Trent's time in prison. He got the shite kicked out of him. Understandable. She had nothing to say about her son becoming a target. Julian, what's your response about your son? Yeah, I know how it is. That code in prison, they find out what you did to a little girl. Most of them inmates in there got kids. What you think they gonna do to you, bro? I'm being attacked in prison. Did she only tell you she was being abused? Most recently, in May 2021, it was announced that Rick was to be called before an inquest. They needed to determine how Tia died. He pled guilty to avoid a trial and hence, you know, he avoided really having to say anything about how it actually went, though he did say, it's kind of <laughs> drawn a blank on this whole one, guys. Sorry. This letter penned by the killer is the only insight he's ever given into the crime. In it, he writes, I have no memory of the night this happened and not much memory of the past two and a half years. I don't know how I could in a sane mind do what I have done. And that is the end of that one. Quite a uh, twist, a hell of a disturbing one, for sure. It's like if in, you know, the sixth uh, sense, if Bruce Willis, he wasn't just a ghost, he was also a sex offender. What a real family that was, you know, the gruesome foursome. Nothing healthy here, definitely applied. Well, that's another one from Oz in the books. Glad I kept my amazing Australian accent in the books, Mike. Bro, I, I was, I told y'all I was suspecting the sons. Never did I think it was a group effort and the dad was in on it. Never. That one is another one that threw me for a loop, bro. Emotional roller coaster. Um, and I just feel feel so, so bad for her, man. You know, his family comes, picks her up, adopts her promises that they're gonna look after her, take care of her, treat her right. It's okay, you're safe with us. All the kid wants to do is feel safe, feel loved. You violated that trust. You abused her, verbally, physically, and then you murdered her. It's unexplainable, bro. It's really unexplainable. Y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Till the next reaction, I'm out. Peace.